Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Extra Serving, a Nation's Restaurant News podcast. I'm your host, Holly Petrie, here with the latest episode, live from Chicago. And I'm here joined by my two lovely co-hosts. My name is Sam Okus, editor-in-chief of Nation's Restaurant News, and I'm like 10 feet away from Holly in a very uh, strange (laughs) conference room. So, And I'm Leanne Zinsmeister, managing editor of NRN, and I don't know whether to look at the screen or at Sam. (laughs) Why did we do this by video? I'm not really sure because we're so used to it. I think we're just so used to doing it via video. Are there other ways to do podcasts? Yeah, I think we're just we're just staring at each other, but also staring at each other via video. But also, we like our listeners, viewers to see us, and so we like to have the option. That's true. That's true. This is going to go on YouTube. I can look at you like this, and they'll think, "Oh, okay, it's we're we're remote, like always." But I could also. Look at you like this. And And it's creepy. For everyone. (laughs) Yeah, I think this is a sign of the times that uh, we are in the same room as each other and we're still looking at each other on a computer screen. Well, Leanne and I are right next to each other. That's true. Looking at each other in a computer screen. (laughs) So what are we doing in Chicago, guys? We're here for the National Restaurant Association show. We are. We're back. It's been three years since the last one so yeah it has been it feels weird to be back but also good i mean it's nice to be able to see people again and we've been spending the last couple of days bouncing around chicago going to various restaurants and talking to people which is very exciting this is a great food scene and um we've gotten a taste of it the last couple of days that we will share with everybody yes we've definitely gotten Like sound effects here. We're in a dungeon there is some, hotel. There is some strange plumbing in the basement of this hotel. Let's say. We have certainly gotten a taste of Chicago. That is for sure. We've gotten to try a lot of really unique and fun uh, restaurants here. We're doing a tour of Chicago restaurants, just like we've done for Austin and New York City. So be sure to check those out. But um, we're doing a tour of Chicago. So. Stay tuned to our YouTube page for that. But we've gotten to learn a lot of things from restaurant tours here in Chicago. We've done interviews with a lot of really interesting people, one of which you'll hear today. Um, and we got to learn a lot about what the city food scene is like from them, um, what it's like to be a restaurant tour in Chicago, what it's like to exist in Chicago just as a person, what <laughs> what it's like to be around food here, what, what neighborhoods have food, where you should go, where you should be, the fact that food doesn't just exist in downtown, the fact that food exists everywhere in Chicago. We heard that from more than one person that you got to travel outside of the loop, which is their downtown here, um, that you have to go everywhere. Uh, They said it. we interviewed two people in a row and they literally both back to back were like, you have to go to Evanston, you have to go to West Loop, you have to go to Naperville, you have to go to all these different places. And I was just like, wow, this is back to back. We're hearing the exact same thing. Um, Must mean something. Yeah, I mean, each neighborhood in Chicago has its own food identity um, and cultural identity that extends to the food. And, um, you know, unfortunately for those of us who come into town for NRA show or other conferences, You know, I I spend a lot of time in River North and West Loop because that's where a lot of the trendy restaurants are. Um, It's where we are now in River North. We've been in West Loop. Um, So, yeah, we're going to have to put some more time for ourselves in Chicago to try all of the other cool neighborhoods because, yeah, that's the vibe we get here is every neighborhood has its own identity. But, um, yeah, we learned a lot of interesting other other interesting things about Chicago. I think the one thing that stood out that you'll hear in um, the interview today is that Downtown Chicago is only 33% occupied um, by workers who normally, you know, fill the office buildings here in the loop. And it's just so fascinating to think like the work from home movement, post pandemic, I mean, things are not back to full capacity. So we've been going to all these restaurants downtown. It's amazing to think that they're still working on a 33% capacity um, with the city. And we're talking about how, you know, hybrid working environments where people come into the office some days a week and not other days a week. Uh, It's just completely changed the nature of business and the days of the week that people show up. And so all of that is very fascinating to me because even as we get back to quote unquote normal, things feel normal as we all go out and about in our daily lives. For restaurant operators, things are still not normal because they were so drastically changed by just where people are at certain times of the day. 
I think we had stopped recording at this point, but we were talking with um, one of the owners of a restaurant that's attached to a hotel. Um, and we were talking about how the, the days of the week, we were talking about how, you know, Mondays and Fridays, nobody's in the office anymore. So those days of the week have slowed down for people who, who are operating restaurants in business centers, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays have really picked up versus that wasn't happening before the pandemic. Um, but in places like hotels, or places that are attached to hotels, Mondays and Fridays are picked up because that's when people are checking in and out of hotels. Um, and so it sort of has this opposite effect. Um, so that was a really interesting thing to hear, sort of this juxtaposition of the days of what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know, uh, part, part of my, of my last, last episode of Takeaway, takeaway um, Hanson yeah, Lee of Lazy Susan, Susan in San Francisco, um, uh, go check it out, highly recommend it, but um, really interesting interview. But one of the things he said is he has a, he owns a bar concept in San Francisco and he was saying even like their happy hour went from 5 p.m. to 2 p.m. because just the people's routines are completely disrupted if you're working from home instead of having a commute to go to your office. So suddenly a 2 p.m. happy hour you can do instead of a 5 p.m. happy hour. So it's just so interesting to hear everybody talk about the ways in which business trends have shifted because of how people's lives have been disrupted by the pandemic. And I don't know that I would call it a challenge, but you know, it seems like I would suggest you need to know how things have shifted and then roll with that. You know, like you have to accommodate and adapt your business according to how your guests want to experience it. So uh, I will say we did eat some really interesting, innovative Chicago food, but Leanne and I also went to Lou Malnati's for lunch. Is that, is that not that interesting, food? innovative Chicago food? It's deep it's dish pizza. It's the definition of Chicago food. It's the definition of Chicago food, but it's, it's also the definition of touristy. Yes. I am the Chicago noob on the team. Um, I haven't been here since I was a child. So I've been having a great time sampling the things that Chicago is known for. I had to get deep dish pizza and a local beer for lunch. Uh, so that's been a great experience for me. What else we got to get Leanne before we leave? What's another quintessential Chicago experience? Well, she said she's already had Portillo's. I was going to suggest Portillo's. Yeah, yeah. yeah we had, um, it's been eight years since I left Arizona, but Portillo's opened there before I moved away. So they've been outside of Chicago for quite a while now. Because Italian beef is just... It just screams desert. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little embarrassed to say this out loud, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I don't think I've ever had Portillo's. <gasps> okay, you got to get Sam to Portillo's. Okay, we have to <laughs> I'm not opposed to going to Portillo's. It's just when you said we should do deep dish or Portillo's for lunch today, I wanted to make sure I had the deep dish experience. Um, and now I have enough pizza in my hotel fridge for the next couple days. So No, we have to take you to Portillo's. But Portillo's Sam. is also excellent, and I'm not opposed to a visit. I love. And we're um, interviewing Portillo's. Portillo's this weekend. We sure are. I don't I'm remember who from I'm Portillo's, I'm but I'm I'm they're on the schedule. Should, should I tell them? them? Should I tell them that I haven't been to Portillo's? Uh, maybe we should take you to Portillo's first. Ooh, yeah, maybe that should be like a late night thing. <gasps> I've been to Portillo's late at night before. Um, Dinner tonight and then drinks and then Portillo's. <laughs> Portillo's has drinks as well. Oh, even better. Oh, drinks and Portillo's. I have done a late night Portillo's run more than once. Um, and let me tell you, it is divine. Doesn't surprise me for some reason. <laughs> no, you've got to get the Italian beef and a big old beer um, and a side of fries. And that is just like the most divine meal in the world. Oh my God, I could cry right now thinking about it. So what, what do our next three days right. look like? What are we doing here? Should we share with everybody? Well, we're going to the NRA show. Um, so that's gonna be our next three days. We're gonna be uh, it at McCormick Place with several thousand other people. Many thousands of people. Many thousands of you. Yes. That's right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we're going to be having conversations with many of you at our booth. And I reiterate, if you are there, come to our booth 3831, at the very least to say hello. But also if we have some opportunity to chat on record, we can put a microphone in front of you and do that too, because we just like to hear from folks. I think our goal with our conversations with everybody is to really find out what is, what's the temperature of the restaurant industry today, you know, trying to gauge where everybody's at. A lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, to summarize where the industry is at, it's how, how do you find and retain workers? How do you deal with the fact that your labor and food costs are skyrocketing? How do you 
prepare for an oncoming recession that everybody is now certain is on its way. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, innovating and scaling, growing, um, investing in your business. So I'm interested to hear from all the people who swing by the booth what their strategies are, are for those things. We'll be sharing uh, many of those conversations every day here on the podcast feed, but we'll have lots, 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 lots after the fact as well. I'm also curious to hear some like interesting stories that you guys have to tell. Um, they don't need to be work related. So if you run into me, you can tell me. Um, I'll be the one dressed in really bright colors. Um, you know, yeah, not hard to uh, um, but as pick. demonstrated. Ollie's sort of a proud uh, <laughs> walk up to the NRA and tap my on all. <laughs> Look for sparkly shoes or orange boots. Yeah, I, oh, which I brought. Um, we know. Uh, so <laughs> we heard. Um, but like, if you have like a personal story you want to tell me, or if you have an interesting fact that you know, um, I'm always the one who wants to hear those because I love getting like something weird out of people. Um, I find those are the most interesting things. That's what I like to hear on a podcast. I like to hear something, you know, really fun and interesting and a little different. It doesn't always need to be about the industry. It can just be something you want to tell me. Maybe we should start a new segment on the podcast that's like fun fact. Uh, Holly gonna... shares a fun fact. Holly oh. shares a fun fact. It'll have its own little intro music. Do, 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 do. Fun fact. Just take that. Back. Let's just take that clip. <laughs> that's it. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We have an intro now. Here for all your podcast music needs. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, my God. So, Sam, what are you most looking forward to at the NRA show? Um, I, I mean, just reconnecting with people. It's, it's uh, you know, it's funny. I haven't seen a lot of industry folks for three years since the last NRA show. Um, and, you know, this is such a great industry where it's people stay in this industry. You know, I've been in this industry now for 13 years, and it's like I've met people 10, 11, 12 years ago that – I still, I still talk, talk with today, today. and in our Asia was always one of those points of contact where you, you saw them and so a lot of those folks I haven't seen for a while that I'll get to reconnect with um, but again just sort of gauging like where does everybody feel like the industry is at right now how do we um, what's what's coming next I mean that's a big part of our job is to help the industry really discern what is next and so just finding that out from everybody at the show of course we'll see a lot of robots and fun technology I'm excited about that too but um, yeah, yeah, I just, I just love that about this, this industry is a people industry, <laughs> and this show is all about people coming together. And so um, it's exhausting because you talk for basically 24 hours, four days in a row, but it's a good kind of exhausting, I guess you could say. Leanne, as your first NRA show, mm -hmm. what are you most looking forward to other than this wonderful plumbing behind us? <laughs> Um, I'm really looking forward to just experiencing the NRA show for the first time and taking it all in. I think I'm here um, for an interesting one as my first because it's the first one since 2019. Um, as we were talking about earlier today, a lot of uh, industry folks come every few years. They don't necessarily come every year. Um, so I suspect that they'll all be here this year. It's They're expecting it to be the biggest NRA show yet. Um, so I'm just looking forward to the whole experience. I've been in this industry for six years, so I've heard a lot of stories. Um, and I've been, you know, behind the scenes. I'm usually just at home in my apartment working 24-7 during the NRA show. Um, so I'm excited to be here in person on the ground and to see uh, what all the fuss is about. By the and way. Um, in contrast to Holly, if you're looking for me at our booth, I've got the black running shoes on. <laughs> okay. Leanne is the functional, I, practical so one. One piece of advice that I kept getting from people was to wear comfortable shoes and to pace myself. Um, those are the two things. It's it's really just Lisa constantly telling me those two things over and over. Yeah. So I'm here. I'm in my running shoes. I'm ready to pace myself through the weekend. Um, so stop by say hello. Boy, Drop a bunch of glass you, outside the door. You never know, know what happens when you record a podcast intro in the basement of a hotel. Um, yes, yes, and we should mention um, Joanna Fantosi, Lisa Jennings, and Brett Thorne from our team are also with us. So come say hello to them as well. We're all going to be fanning out and, um, you know, covering the floor uh, and lots of content uh, that we'll be creating. We'll be writing stories, uh, again, uh, podcasts every day, videos. Stay up to date at nrn.com or our social channels, or again, just you know, email us or something. I don't know. Subscribe to our newsletters. Um, we'll be sending out special NRA show newsletters every day of the show. 
um, and also loading up NRA show content into NRN AM throughout the week next week, even once we're back home. So you can find us pretty much anywhere, social media. Anywhere, anytime. You can find us on the show floor too. Exactly, 3831, that's our booth number. Yes. Well, I'm most looking forward to the innovation that we see because that's the topic I'm covering this year. Um, but it's also, we haven't seen a group of people like this with products, with food, with anything in three years. And in the three years that we've been gone, things have innovated beyond belief. I mean, we've seen people start to use robots, use AI in ways that we didn't think that we'd see for 10, 15 years. Um, so I'm so excited to see ways that people have innovated with food, that they've innovated with technology, that just the way that we've progressed in time uh, is incredible. And I can't wait to see what people have come up with, what crazy ideas people have dreamt up during this time of isolation. Um, I think it's gonna be incredible and wild. And I think we're gonna see some truly bizarre and great things well that pretty much covers it <laughs> <laughs> that captures yeah. it all bizarre yeah. and incredible <laughs> well we will see you all at the show booth 3831 we will see you there and until then have a great afternoon should i explain the episode we're about the, the interview we're rolling into should we talk about oh, i that? guess we should talk about the episode we can talk about that too I just, I just, Introduce the episode that we have. I know, I am. Who are we talking to today? I was just so excited about the NRE show. I just Thanks, got Leanne. so wrapped up in it. I just feel like Leanne, uh, maybe maybe we brought Leanne on here to slowly phase out Holly, because Holly doesn't seem to understand how to run a podcast intro anymore. Apparently not. <laughs> you just put yourself in a hotel basement, and suddenly everything goes out the window. All the rules. There are no windows. You're right. right. <laughs> there are curtains, but no windows behind them. That's a little... Concerning. Um, anyway, Hope you know how to edit a podcast, Leanne. Yeah. Apparently. Anyway, our episode, our conversation, our conversation today is with Zach Flansman. He is the, let's see, president and COO of Brown Bag Seafood. This is a ten-unit fast casual seafood concept, based here in Chicago. Um, got their start in Chicago, and then they now have two units in Atlanta, and they are about to open in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I've known Zach for many years. Um, and Donna Lee, his uh, partner at Brown Bag, she founded this brand, and the two of them are building something very exciting and are both super smart people as it relates to uh, building and scaling fast casual concepts. And so we wanted to sit down with Zach and talk about not only Chicago and the food scene in Chicago, but their brand, Brown Bag Seafood, and um, where that brand was heading and all that. Unfortunately, Donna was in is in Atlanta, um, so didn't get a chance to connect with her, but Zach was in town, so we really enjoyed speaking with him. So that's our interview for today. Liam, why don't you wrap it up as our new host? <laughs> Sam Holly's gonna quit, and then we're all gonna be in trouble. I, was say, I feel like once we once we stop recording on this, I'm gonna get some dagger eyes. Uh, yeah. Or I'm getting well, dagger eyes through the computer right now. Yeah, I can't tell. I think you asked for it. Holly, so. you'll keep hosting extra well, serving. Thank you all for listening today. Um, <laughs> next week, Leanne will be hosting. Um, so try tomorrow. <laughs> thank you all for my last episode, and we will see you at the show, booth thirty-eight thirty-one.